Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodholt. I don't know about you, but I'm fairly glad that this week of looking at the antitheses Jesus spoke in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 is coming to a close because my toes feel fairly well stomped on. What Jesus has said isn't easy to put into practice as he calls us to a new, transformed, more loving society. And nowhere is that more true or more challenging than today. Here's the last one. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Ouch! There's nowhere in the Bible that tells us to hate our enemy. Yet, that's pretty easy for us to do. And it would have been easy for Jesus' hearers to understand, too, since they were under occupation by one. What Jesus in the Bible does say is that we are supposed to love our enemies because they are also children of God. And again, this is hard. For example, we pray, God bless America. And it would be pretty hard for many of us to pray, God bless Iran, or God bless Afghanistan, with equal sincerity. But you see, the call to love our enemies is based on imitating God. We must be generous, just as God is impartially generous. God gives light, rain, the earth, etc., to all without regard for their moral rightness. As children of God, we are to love with God's kind of love. At the end of this passage, Jesus tells us that we are to be perfect. Most of us would say that we can't be perfect. But in the Bible, the word perfect has the sense of whole or complete. And love is never merely a feeling, but always implies action. So what Jesus means here is that to be perfect is to live out love in all things. We aren't called just to feel it, but to live it, to enact it. Now it's important to note that there are no exceptions listed here. There's no except for of, or what kind of enemies to love. We are to love them all. Trying to imitate God this way, in how God loves both generously and impartially, reminds me of a song called, I Want to Be Just Like You. In the song, a father sits on the edge of his son's bed after bedtime prayers, and as he looks at his son sleeping, he prays, Lord, I want to be just like you, because he wants to be just like me. Help me be a living Bible, Lord, that my little boy can read. I want to be just like you, because he wants to be like me. That's the kind of transformed society that Jesus calls us to, and that's what the kingdom of God is like. Back on Monday, we described the kind of society and people we are called to be, and the kind of society Jesus embodied. We are called to build a community where hate doesn't happen, where lust cannot deform, a truth-telling, non-retaliating, enemy-loving community of God. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.